you inevitably make a deeper, better film if it's coming from a place where you're trying to say something or you're bringing a unique view to it. Hey, so it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, so I suppose I'd like to start with, how did you first become involved with the Uncertain Kingdom project? Where did you first hear about it? We'd had the film in development with the BFI and when we heard of the Uncertain Kingdom, um, it just seemed like everything we were trying to do kind of matched what they were trying to do. Uh, they wanted to do 20 films that really told the story of the UK. And this was quite a pressing issue for disabled people in terms of how they're represented. So um, it was kind of a natural fit, really. And I think having that dual partnership um, has really, really boosted the project. So the film focuses on a, a disabled actor, Bella, teaching a, a non-disabled actor how to kind of improve his performance as a as a disabled character and the title of yeah. uh, verisimilitude is all focusing on on the truth how important do you think it is to kind of show that truth in uh, the filmmaking production and casting i think it's incredibly important and i think every disabled artist out there disabled actor has definitely also consulted and I've, I've done it many times given instructions to uh, able-bodied actors that are playing disabled roles um one of my funniest ones was rob bryden who i did a show with and um in his first moments of being in a wheelchair i was the person there you know playing one of the other characters kind of uh showing him some of the ropes so um i think it's something that struck would strike a chord with every disabled actor out there and if you had a non-disabled actor play that part they just wouldn't have had that life experience of knowing what it's like to have to explain how to do something to somebody who's got a job or a role that you would love to do. But you started out uh, working as an actor. How have you managed to move into, you know, mastering the craft of direction? Was that purely through observing on set or did you take a more kind of theoretical approach? I think me diversifying has been mainly out of unemployment. <laughs> 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 so I started out as an actor and originally I thought oh that's brilliant you know I've got an agent I'm gonna be active for ages and then sat there for six months and didn't do anything so then I had my own stories I wanted to tell but you have to kind of learn the writing and no one's going to produce that for you unless you try and get it to people and get the finance yourself so organically one thing's led on to the other well, so how can you know a filmmaker starting out working on really low budgets what advice would you have for them in kind of, uh, you know, is that in borrowing equipment and uh, cameras? Is that just calling in loads of favours from friends? How do you manage to make a film with zero money? You're trying to show your hand as a filmmaker. So in every way, you've got to look within the restraints that you've got and go, how can we creatively solve that problem? It's like coronavirus at the moment. It's it's provided a, a problem that creatively we're all trying to respond to um so if you have low budget don't set yourself <laughs> the challenge of like 20 different locations and lots of different um do something simple but do it really well you know do a couple of people uh one location but really powerful gripping dialogue but don't be afraid to fail as well especially the good thing about the ultra low kind of to no budget filmmaking is that it's you cutting your teeth um so you need to go through that process um no one's unless they're very 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 talented no one's going to have their BAFTA winning uh film their first film it's just not going to happen so allow yourself a chance to fail because you'll you won't make that mistake in the next one you'll probably make different mistakes but you want to get to that point where you're making films and 95 percent of it you're absolutely happy with and you can let that other five percent slide so how did you go about casting the film? Did you have an open casting process or were actors like uh, Ruth Madeley and Annie Slow uh, specifically approached? It was different for the different parts, really. I mean, originally the script, it was a male, uh, uh, the part of Bella was actually male. Um, but having known Ruth and kind of seen her work, we chatted, uh, me and Justin chatted and we we're kind of thinking about um, how we could kind of alter it. and. By having a female role, it just, it really did kind of change the dynamic for the better, really. And Alice was just beautiful. She 
uh, it was a straight away, yes, uh, I'll come and do that. So and I think out of all the people that we cast, when I got the email saying that Alice was going to do it, I, I, that was the one I kind of almost fainted. I was like, really? Um, because she's just absolute comic legend. So casting is kind of one of those, you know, very important things for a director to go through when they're you know, in that pre-production stage of a short film. What advice would you have for a young filmmaker starting out? What are the things that they need to consider before shooting the film to make sure that the end product is as good as it can be? The, the, the greatest thing is building a team around you that you that are all on the same page. And by that, they don't have to agree with everything, but they all kind of get the vision of where you're trying to get to, as well as that, just kind of knowing that you're probably going to be the... Um, the least valuable person <laughs> on the day in the room and that somebody else in that room has got a better suggestion or is a more of an expert in their field so to trust um, the people around you so you learn on different projects together. I suppose it all comes back to assembling that trustworthy and good team around you again doesn't it? Um, yeah. Do you think that a filmmaker should only make films that reflect their own perspective and personal experience? Oh, that's a good question. I think that you inevitably make a deeper, better film if it's coming from a place where you're trying to say something or you're bringing a unique view to it. Um, but I don't think you should be limited to it. I think first off, it's actually really good to show your hand to the industry and go, look, you know, this is me. So whether you've um, come from a a background where you know it's the family dynamics been difficult and you bring that voice and that authenticity to it um it's about making something that people can connect with and engage with and they understand you as a filmmaker um so inevitably if you're bringing stuff it's going to be easier than you kind of going okay so i want to write about this person and their life um it's just easier if it's something that's coming from the heart but I think that once you've done that which is storytellers and so then you you take that process that you've done here um, and you've honed and you take it on to the next thing.